Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, May 19th here in Busan, South Korea, and I'm on my way back to the United States, back to Seattle. Uh, just showing around here the top of Busan in the departure area. It's a fairly straightforward international terminal. All the way to gate one. And I'm gonna go into Korean Air Lounge. Uh, I'm flying Korean Air, both uh, business class on two segments. I'm going to Seoul Incheon, uh, and then I'll make my way from Incheon to Seattle where uh, I've got a sneaky suspicion that this seat that I'm getting is a little bit more than just the standard business class seat. So uh, I was checking the aircraft layout and I don't know. Uh, I have a feeling it might be more than business class. So uh, I'll enter into the Korean Air Lounge here in Busan and I'll give you a tour around. All right, now I'm in the Korean Lounge. It's actually very quiet compared to what it was just a minute ago here. Um, fair basic amenities. They do have the bathroom in there, but uh, just overall high level seating. Uh, nothing too complicated here. Uh, my flight departs in about one hour from now. It's 9.47 and the departure time is 10.50. I'll probably get myself a little bit of coffee. Uh, do a little bit of work, but to go around here more or less more just snacks, etc. Oh, we got a little bit of front noodles. I didn't really have much of a breakfast, so I'm going to try to take full advantage of that. And a few sandwiches. Uh, some juice. If you really wanted Heineken, you could go and get that as well. You can put a little fan ventilation as well as air purifiers here. Uh, more on the sky shop. And then, yeah, so it's a fairly basic lounge here. But again, nice and quiet compared to what it was outside. And uh, once I go and exit the lounge here in about 40 minutes or so, then I will go and head on over to the gate and take you with me onto boarding. All right, time to go and board Korean Air flight number 14142. Uh, Seoul Incheon. I need to go and get my boarding pass with me here, making sure I got everything. Yes, I have. All right, so boarding pass in hand here. Let's get to the gate to Incheon and we'll go and uh, make our way to our boarding area. I'm a little bit running behind schedule. We are all good here. So, let's go on board this 737-700 aircraft to Seoul Incheon. And we've got Air Asia uh, for Malaysia and then Air Busan, which is normally the flight that I go on because of Star Alliance, but also I'm deciding, you know what, I might just accumulate some mileage on Korean Air just because uh, just have a little bit of diversity, especially because they started devaluing miles in the United States for both Delta and United. So, well, there are probably, well, when it comes to traveling to Asia, I prefer the Asia Airlines as opposed to the US ones anyway. So uh, we'll make our way through and uh, get to the seat. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. I believe I am seat. Uh, which seat am I? 7E. Okay. 7E. Alright. Here. Okay. Apologies for that. Just had to go in to get everything aboard here. This is a quick, uh, not even a one hour shuttle hop flight over from Busan over to Seoul. Uh, but as you can see, it's a 900 aircraft with old interior lining. Um, the train is underneath in here. Screens, I believe, are below that do pull over, but I have to find them. Uh, looking at the outside here. Got myself, get myself comfortable as we go and make our way over 
but again, well, it's a short flight, not expecting too much, so I'm just well, going to go in and sit back and relax a little bit, and we'll be on our way shortly with takeoff. Welcome to Seoul Incheon Airport. Uh, this is the, I think the west side here. It is the less busy side, at least at the moment. Uh, more of the flights will start departing on the east side of the gates, uh, probably at around like 2, 2.30. Right now it's just short of noon here, so it's gonna be a little bit quiet until uh, more of the late afternoon, early evening departures. Uh, most of the evening departures to the United States depart uh, no earlier than 4 p.m. Usually to, from 4 to 6. And then Asia flights are kind of scattered throughout. Later in the night time is uh, flights to Australia and New Zealand. And uh, Incheon Airport, in my opinion, is one of the best airports to go in transit in around the world. I'm really happy and I'm really more or less privileged to be able to go and fly internationally in this way uh, as you can see through here uh, more of the planes on the left side but again we're just around noon time and it won't be for a little while until uh, the remaining flights really start to go aboard so uh, Rome at 1 30 and then Singapore at 6 40 p.m. Uh, my flight departs at 4 40 p.m. back to Seattle Tacoma and I'll be boarding a Boeing 777-300ER. But for now, I'll take you around through the terminal here and I gave it a little bit of a walk before we board. So I've got about four hours to go and chill here in Seoul Incheon. So probably just gonna kick around in the Korean Air Lounge. I'm gonna see what this ticket with a million miler lounge is gonna be like. Let's see what that is all about and then uh, go from there. All right, let's go and see what this Myler Club lounge is about. The other side is first class, but uh, let me show you kind of what the preview overlook is here. 747-8. And then to the other side is first class, but I don't quite have, <laughs> not quite there yet. Uh, not for a while, so. Um, got long way to go flight doesn't depart until three ish so let's see what this million mile club is like i mean you could do uh showers over this way and then inside the room got a really nice i mean this is a really, really nice lounge and then the seats here it's really a lot better Copies of Morning Calm, which I will do and take a copy on the way out of here. Uh, there is a relaxation room. I wonder what this is about. Well, not sure if this room needs much. Uh, so 
this is the relaxation room, so if you have behind, so yeah, you can go and, uh, a little dark in here, but you can go and, well, basically take a full nap, and looks like you can go and stomp out. That's actually pretty cool. What else do you have here? More seats. A lot of places to go and go about down here. Let's see what this other side is. It's a lot quieter than this side. Might go into the other. Um, we got a lot of pastries. And hopefully some food. I'm going to probably go and snack on that a little. And oh, look at this. Selection of fruit, meats. Um, if you want to go drink beer, you can. Um, and then this side is another privacy area. Thank you. And then you go and relax. Can purify is another place where you can literally just go and take a nap around here. A lot of privacy space. Uh, going around to the other side. Uh, this is actually quite nice. Um, not going to be as busy compared to some of the other lounges. Um, and a little bit of cleanup needed, but it's not as good as uh, There we go. Well, this is actually quite a nice area. Plenty of space for those that prefer certain elements. And. I think I'm going to situate myself, get a little bit of food, and probably lounge around here. And go and kick back, relax, and do a little bit of work. And then I might check out or take a little bit of a shower from there. And then make my way. Okay, let's do the food test here in the Million Mile Lounge. Uh, here I've got a salad with me. Let's see if we can get a better camera angle. We've got some seared salmon and asparagus salad and then some mixed greens. Uh, we've got this um, uh, beef um, medley soup here that I'm gonna give it a little bit of a try. You can never get enough water. And we've got some lots of beef and then salmon and then uh, ribs and then some spicy bulgogi. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? And I'm going to start off to sample the seared salmon here. Make sure I've got the right place here. And my stomach is really crying. I'm really hungry. Um, but here we go. Wow. That's really good. I mean, it's basically sashimi and then they crush the outside. But that sauce. Yeah, that's incredible. And then add a few extra green onions with, or red onions with it. Wow, that's, that's pretty good. Then we got this like sea snail salad. I don't know what this is, um, but I'm about to find out here. Uh, it's supposed to go along with a couple carrots. I'm not grabbing chopsticks right today. And if I had to eat that all day, I could certainly eat that all day. <laughs> I want to eat it all day. Probably not, but the seasonal is definitely a chewy texture. And some people like chewy meat. I'm okay with it. I mean, as long as it tastes good and has flavor. Come on, fair enough for that. Then the next up we have asparagus. Well, what are you going to expect with an asparagus salad? Okay, so this is like more. This is cooked asparagus. Not raw. So that's a plus. <laughs> This reminds me of kind of the cooked greens I usually have with Chinese food. So I actually really like that. 
I'm gonna skip the salad for right now because I know it's like any other salad. I'm probably not gonna expect much here. Um, but yeah, that asparagus was surprisingly good. Like, really good. Okay, now let's move to this. Uh, this beef uh, over on top of white rice that I made here. Um, a little bit of modification, of course, but originally it just comes out with uh, just the meat and potatoes. It's basically like a potato medley. But let's see how the meat is first. Wow, this is really tender meat. Um, not overcooked, soft, just just goes in your mouth so easily. Um, let's do a potato here. I don't know, that was a, um, that was a radish that I just had. Yeah, soft. Uh, really, really good, like, really good. I couldn't stop eating it now. Now the beef rib. No, it just came off the bone. Also, very tender. Easy to chew. Amazing. Now, beef bulgogi. Spicy. A little dry, but it is acceptable for airline lunch food, but compared to everything else, the bulgogi was a little bit dry. Now, lastly, we've got this salmon here. I'm just going to take one piece of this. Don't know what we're doing. Where do I go from here? Um, let's try from this end. Uh, we got some salmon. Just right. I mean, a lot of salmon tends to be dry. This still has a lot of juice in it, and what's augmenting it too is that there's there's the salmon fat and oil that, as they sear it through, I mean, it's still contained within. That makes a huge difference when you're eating cooked salmon versus not. But yeah, the salmon is actually quite remarkably good. And then lastly, of course, I'm going to try out this soup. Uh, let's see how this is like. And uh, let's get on the reposition here. It's like any beef vegetable medley soup that you'll get in Asia. It's pretty standard, I would say, but really good if um, you're looking for something to warm you up a little bit and just want something a little bit lighter but with, with a meaty texture. Yeah, so that's what you're going to get from this soup. I would say it's not overly impressive, but I think that's kind of designed to be a little bit lighter for those that are not wanting to go so heavy like I am today. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, that's the food in the Korean Air Prestige Lounge. Actually, not Prestige Lounge, the Million Miler Lounge. I'm gonna finish up here. I'm gonna probably take a shower here. And then I'm gonna try to see if I can sneak into that Korean Air Prestige Lounge. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna double, allow me double entry, but I figured, you know, I'm probably gonna give it a try and see what happens. So, uh, I'll check out from here and then, uh, but who knows, maybe I'll show what's around in the bathroom uh, before I take a shower. So, I'll check back in a bit. All right, so I'm trying this massage chair out, and there's a lot of different options on here. I'm just toggling through a lot of these auto, but oh my god. It's like, I'm being abused, like, oh, can't exactly see. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it as I go through here, but yeah. Um, this is abusive, uh, at least for me. Just means I'm probably really tight, but oh, oh man, this, oh man, this is abusive. I don't know how these chairs are like being made, but I think this is what they say when they have like the Costco chairs that do the massages. But they're a little bit of fun to go. Oh, 
well, I'm not going to show where it's at right now because, I mean, it's, it goes right along the lower back towards the flood area. But, uh, this is interesting. Ooh. Yeah. But there you go. Uh, just a little bit of sampling. I think it's going through on the lower pelvic area down below. Uh, but, yeah, ooh, that's actually quite nice the more I think about it. Probably means I'm really tight. Uh, but just want to give a little bit of that for you there. Here we have the bathroom. So this is the shower area. We have interesting shampoo. And hello. We've got more. I'm sure a balm and then shaving cream and towels. Hair dryer. Mouthwash could use that. Then, I'll to toilet, and then, of course, the seat that I think rolls out in front. So, we're going to take a quick shower here and uh, rinse out a little bit and go from there. So, I'm going to take a quick one, and then we'll pop on out and head to the gate. Okay, I was able to get into the Prestige Lounge, so yeah, I went to a Million Miles Lounge, but now I'm going to Prestige Lounge here, uh, which is in the middle of Terminal Number 2. Uh, but just to show around, as you can see, it's much bigger compared to before. Hello, Stephanie. <laughs> nope, it's just one of my other co-workers. I'm just gonna, uh, a couple of us are on the same flight coming over. And then, uh, but just to show around here, this is a significantly bigger buffet. But I think it looks to be just about the same types of food as I go and walk around here. We got the bar, which is also the same. Um, yeah. Food options are about the, oh, he got the sandwiches there. And then, uh, same thing with food. Uh, maybe a few more food options, but honestly, it's more of the same uh, compared to the Million Mile Lounge. I will say this is probably a little bit busier compared to the other place. Uh, but as you can see, a lot more seats. Certainly a lot more crowded. But again, the other lounge has the uh, massage chair, which I will gladly take. And um, here it's just more casual seating, I guess is the best way to go and see it here. Um, and yeah, so again, the difference here is this is more stand-up seating and less of the more deluxe seating that you get from the other lounge, but really about the same, I would say the other lounge is a little bit quieter and, excuse me, uh, the other lounge is a little bit quieter, actually quite significantly quieter and then um, just a, a little bit more um, relaxation near the lounge. So uh, there you go. That's uh, what it's like here in this prestige lounge. Um, just to, here to show you around. And uh, what I'll do is I will relax in here for about 20, 30 minutes. Then I'm going to go and do a little bit of duty free shopping to get some cookies and goods for a few of my friends back in Seattle uh, at the duty free shops. And then we'll go and board the plane. And I'll take you along with me. All right, let's go and board this plane over to Seattle. Uh, they already did the passport check, so now I'm going to go and uh, do just the boarding pass. It's going to take a little bit of time to, in order to get through here, but uh, now that I've cleared, uh, the expected flight time is around 10 hours and 15 minutes on this Boeing 777-300ER. And uh, once we aboard here, I'm in seat number 2A. We're about to find out what this is about. I think this is an all business class configuration because this is a pretty high business class volume seat. So let's go board here. And we're about to leave Korea here on our business adventure. I have two co-workers that are also with me, uh, but they're coming a little bit later because uh, I went a little bit, uh, did a little bit of duty-free, obligatory, um, what we call, uh, cookie shopping. So, uh, 
That's all there really is to it with that. But uh, let's get to the seats here. Going to seat number 2A in prestige class. And as I board through the jet with here, let's go and see what this seat is about. I believe this is all business class configuration, but seat 2A always surprises me. So. Two A. Well, two A. Let's get this. Well, this is more than just a business class seat. This is actually the first. I mean, it's technically a business class product, but this is their first class seat configuration. As we go around here, take a look. And yeah, what a seat. So we're gonna, I'm gonna settle in here a little bit first. And uh, once I get everything aboard, then I will go and show what is around this older first class configuration seating, uh, which is a full lie in bed. And uh, we'll be underway shortly here. But let me go and settle some things down first. Some storing additional extra valuables, 
sandwich here. So there you go. That's your in uh, in seat componentry, and uh, just gonna relax, enjoy this flight here, and then uh, we'll get to the amenity kit. All right, let's show a little this amenity kit here. Some real old classics here. So kind of more 
lot of older uh, styles, and then they've got see if they have anything new here. All right, so, yep. Okay, we've got some decent, okay, 20 track, so a decent selection here. A little finicky. Gonna move this, all right, there we go. James, I don't know what happened there, but what do they have for kids? Okay, this is where the games are, all right. Then, uh, Sky Shop, Kale, Brightness, Help. Let's see if we can go in through here. I guess not the most touch worthy. It's going, I don't know what happened there. I guess a little bit of a finicky uh, older product, and I know I've been on the newer Korean Air 787s. That product tends to be a little bit easier, or at least the touchscreen is easier to go and navigate around. But, uh, there we go. So that's your in-flight entertainment here. And probably in about 10 minutes, we're going to be getting some of our first in-flight food service. And of course, I'll take you along with me for that. So, uh, with that, there we go. That's your in-flight entertainment. Uh, a little bit uh, dated in terms of the options that are out there. I forgot one thing when I was doing the previous review. There is a remote control, so at least you can go and control it if the touch screen is not exactly quite working out the way you want it to be. Um, but there you go. Again, even though this is a business class offering, but uh, this is a first class kind of an older dated seat, I know that they're renovating and they're going to be providing a new uh, product. So with that, I'm going to sit back here and enjoy a little bit of downtime before the food service comes. And once the food comes in, I will bring it along with me. Okay, first, appetizers come out. We've got some on here. A little bit of turbulence. So apologies for the shakiness that is going on in my camera. Going through a little bit of turbulence as we get through to the east side of Korea. in the 
remember that's a meat dish here.
that's your breakfast uh, meal uh, for the Korean style. There's also an American style that they provide on, on these airlines, but I'm gonna be having more than enough American food and a lot of hotels also do the same thing. So uh, there you have it. Um, eat the rest of breakfast and uh, take as much sleep as I can in here before uh, we land in Seattle. enjoyed the video with Korean Air. Um, certainly that experience was a different one in terms of other business classes that I've written at. Uh, I'm actually now in Newark here uh, to go on my next journey, which you're about to see in the next video. But of course, if you like the content of uh, my review of Korean Air, then uh, please go and hit that subscribe button for me down below, as well as leave a comment. And have you been on Korean Air? And uh, let me know what your thoughts are and until the next one calling in from Newark now for my next journey uh, Yoshi out